Recently, I read this quite interesting article from Figma's databases team on how they tackled some challenges with Postgres performance and how they transitioned to horizontal sharding. This article goes into describing the challenges Figma had with their scale, as well as exploring different options of partitioning and sharding, and finally presenting their ultimate solution to solve their scale problems. And one thing specifically caught my eye, which is this DB proxy they developed internally to intercept SQL queries. As we can read it here, the DB proxy intercepts the SQL queries from the application layer and routes them dynamically to various Postgres instances. And I thought that it would be cool to build such an interceptor proxy in Go. So that's what we're going to do in this video today. We'll be working with proxying the TCP connections, intercepting and modifying the SQL queries, and so on. So it should be fun. And by the way, here's the diagram how it works at Figma. On the left, there is the application layer. On the right, Postgres instances with pgbounce in front of them. And in the middle, there is our DB proxy that intercepts all the queries and dynamically routes them to these Postgres instances. And so we already mentioned the dynamic routing. That's exactly what Figma is doing. Imagine we have the table called users, and maybe the first million users by the ID go to database number one, and the rest will go to database number two. Obviously, it's a simple example, but something like that. Then our DB proxy can also parse and validate and analyze the queries that come from the application layer. Next, our database and platform teams can independently change the schema of the database without impacting our applications. DB proxy can also improve the security of your application. You can disallow the direct access from your application to the databases, and every client has to go through the DB proxy. On top of that, you can have better observability and maybe, maybe performance. Okay, let's dive into that and implement a simple DB proxy in Go. Keep in mind that this is only an experiment and is not supposed to be run in production. There are production-ready database proxies, open source ones and proprietary like Amazon RDS proxy, but our goal is to implement it ourselves. Our DB proxy will solve a very simple use case. It will intercept the SQL query and rewrite the table name if it matches some specific format. More specifically, it will detect if there are any queries made against order underscore v1 table and route these queries instead to orders underscore v2. All right, and let's begin with setting up our database. I will use Docker Compose for that. We will use MySQL as a database engine for this video, just because it's a little bit easier to parse the messages in MySQL rather than doing it in Postgres, because there is this welcome message in Postgres, but the idea will be absolutely the same. So our MySQL Compose service with some any SQL file that we need to write to set up our tables. All right, our database in script will create a database. We'll create a table only orders v2. So as you can see, we don't have orders v1 table at all. Imagine it was removed. And just create some various records there. Okay, now to the fun part, the proxy itself. So let's assume our MySQL database is running on some port 3306. And ideally, it's configurable via environment variables, for example, or configuration parameters. And our proxy will be listening on 3307. But for this exercise, let's just hard code them as constants in the Go code. So let's say proxy address is so 3307, right? And our DB address is 3306. Cool, let's proceed. We're just listening on the port, so tax error. You can use net package. Exactly, listen TCP and our proxy address. And let's handle the error. Now we have our proxy and multiple clients can connect to that. So we can have this endless loop where we do proxy dot accept so proxy exactly dot accept so that gives us client to proxy connection let's also handle the error and we need to make sure that this connection is closed at some point and we can also print out Kind of the connection has been made. New connection. 
and we will have the remote address here as well. So we can do this connection dot remote address exactly. Okay, so at this point we have a connection, and we can handle this in a go routine. So let's call this function let's say transport and pass the connection there. Now let's define this function transport. Com. And actually, since we have a function to handle this connection, I'll move this defer connection clause there as well. And now the main logic will actually happen here. So our client connects to our proxy, and we need to forward the bytes to the database, all right? So the TCP packet bytes. And for some queries, we need to change them. So that's what we are going to do here. And then obviously, we need to get the data back from the from our database MySQL and send it back to our client. So first, let's establish the connection from proxy to our DB. We can do it here. Obviously, you can use uh, maybe global connection, a pool of connections, but for simplicity, let's for each connection, let's have a separate DB connection as well. So that will be as well net dial. I believe it's also TCP, but DB address. Let's handle the errors. So there are two things that need to happen here. First is that we, we take the bytes that we receive from the client and forward them to the database. And we need to intercept them and modify, right? So um, let's say forward to DB. And we can do this in the GoRoutine. Let's say it's called transport, right? Maybe we pass connection and DB connection there. So we'll come back to that later. And the second thing is actually to receive the bytes from the database and send it to the clients without any changes. So let's say forward from DB, and that will be the blocking operation. And I love IO package, by the way, in Go. It has so many nice functions, and generally Go is really good at networking and IO. And there is this great function, io.copy, which takes um, destination and source, and basically, copies all the bytes until EOF end of file, right? So um, that would be, I believe, exactly connection, DB connection. This is a blocking operation, but also let's handle the error, right? Here I made a mistake. So it's not transport. It's our new function that we didn't implement yet. It's intercept, right? And we pass there our proxy connection or client proxy connection and db connection. Okay, so let's define this function intercept. And similarly to io.copy, it needs source connection and destination connection. So let's define them as arguments connection.net. My bad. It's net.connection. Now imagine we are inside of this function and we are receiving the bytes that client sent to our proxy. So let's read them and try to do something with that. So we can define our buffer as an array of fixed lengths. And so we will read some amount of bytes from, from our source. So source read, I believe, into buffer. So at this point, imagine we we have some bytes that we read from our source. Now, how to know if there is orders v1 or orders v2 there or anything else? And by the way, for this exercise, we assume that there is no SSL encryption, so we don't need to decrypt these bytes whatsoever. Obviously, it's a proper proxy. It needs to accept SSL certificates and so forth, but for this exercise, that's enough. All right, so we got some bytes. Now let's go and read some MySQL documentation. There is this great resource called Understanding MySQL Internals on O'Reilly, and it can tell us what's inside of the MySQL message packet. Okay, so let's start. With the offset zero and lens three, there is the packet body lens. Cool, so we can skip that. Lens one is a packet sequence number. So I'm not sure if you're interested in that. We'll skip authenticating handshake. Then begins the body of the packet, which starts with the command code, and then the non-compressed packet. And when it comes to the command codes, we are interested in this one, which is called com underscore query with the numeric value of three. So that means that a client sent us a query, so it's not 
like authentication or let's say quit sleep it's actual query and the query itself will be after that so just to remind ourselves so we have kind of three is for the size i mean three bytes there one for the kind of sequence then there is the next one one is for command code and then the rest is the query itself right so um yeah to make sure that if n is greater than five which means that there is a kind of size sequence a command code but also some query so it's not empty and let's also make sure that our fifth element is com query so i'll define it as a constant somewhere there Query. So that was numeric value of three. It's a byte. We can write it zero x zero three. So the query itself will be. Let's maybe work with strings. So the buffer uh, from index number five until the end. So n probably. So in the real world scenario, I believe there will be some lexers here. So we will parse our queries properly, and then figure out how to modify them. For simplicity of this exercise, let's just do simple string replace. Okay, so new query will be, will be strings. Maybe okay, replace all query. Let's also do strings to lower here, right? And then we can tell from what did we want from orders v1. We change it to from orders v2. So as you can already see, it's quite limited, right? We only do from orders. What if it's insert into orders? What if it's left join orders? But obviously for that we need a lexer, right? And uh, we won't do it in this video, maybe sometime in the future. But for now, let's imagine it's a simple select something from. And cool. Now for debugging, let's bring this out so we can see what queries have been sent to us and what we actually sent to MySQL. Cool, because we are working with bytes, let's modify our buffer. So our buffer, uh, we need to copy the query only part so we don't change anything else. And then we copy the you know, bytes representation of our new query. Cool, so at this point we have the modified bytes and we can set it to MySQL and it will be here. So it will do destination exactly that's right. And then everything that's inside our buffer. So we can we call this function actually for every packet, right? Even if it's not query, because we still need, let's say we are authenticating or saying hello to MySQL. So we need to forward and forward this. And only if it's a query, we need to do some action, like very simple as here override it and then still call destination.write. So destination, as you remember, it's our connection to MySQL from the proxy. Okay, so let's review our very simple proxy. So we'll be listening on 3307 port. MySQL will be on 3306. Remember, we started with our Docker Compose. We know that the uh, query command comes with the numeric value three, so we're using it later. And then, yeah, we start our proxy. We wait for connections. There could be multiple, right? We handle each connection in the goroutine called transport, where we initialize connection from the proxy to our MySQL, and then intercept in the goroutine, but also copy everything that came back from, from MySQL to proxy back to the client. Our intercept function is that simple. Uh, we read bytes that came from client. If the command code is query, so numeric value three, we simply do string replace from orders v1 to from orders v2. We print it, send it back to the buffer and to the server. Cool, now everything is here. Let's test it out. So I already have a MySQL run, and without starting a proxy, let's just connect directly to our MySQL. So this is the port 3306. Let's connect to that. And let's say select all from orders v2. Cool, so we got some records. What if you do orders v1? Huh? This table doesn't exist here. Then let's start our proxy first. And let's do absolutely the same, but on the port 3307, 
that's where our proxy is and is disabled SSL. So we'll do SSL mod, I believe it's disabled. Cool, so as you can see, it's, it already prints some queries that our MySQL client sent to our proxy. So show databases, maybe show tables, but we are interested in select. So let's do the table that exists, right? Select all from orders, uh, yeah, B2. So all good, uh, but we can also do orders V1. And it's routed and we get the results back, which is quite cool because physically this table doesn't exist. It was a very simple example but we learned the basics on how to intercept and forward the TCP packets. We also learned why we need DP proxy at all. And as I mentioned, there are existing open source and proprietary solutions, so you may check them out. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you later.